I'm just gonna start right here. Look how weird this is. Look, look at where Silver Cave is. It's, at least it's an easier way to get to Johto, but I just want to point that out. That was very strange and uh, just weird. I'm just gonna say that. The guy's outside. I'm gonna go buy some coins because guess what? We don't have time to gamble. It'll cost me blah blah. Yeah. No, I didn't want that. I did that earlier. Whatever. I did that last time when I was getting flamethrower. And we are finally done with this. We don't have to ever come back in here. Well, for this, anyway. We don't actually have to come back to anything, but I want Ice Beam. Yes. Okay. Switch move. Ice Beam. Teach it to Gyarados. Gyarados with its terrible special attack. Do we an older move? Yeah, sure. Uh... Um, we'll just get rid of Ice Punch. I was thinking of maybe keeping it for over Sweet Kiss, but whatever. You never know. All right, with that, we can uh, move on to... Oh, that guy's gone. But we're going to move on to World Islands. We have a little bit to explore. There's one path I missed the original time. And it's actually the same way the Lugia, except instead of going up, we go down, but... And that's also why I flash. And why I haven't switched Pokemon. So we're going to do this. Uh, this shouldn't take too long. And then we get head back to Mount Silver. Because we have a flyable path there. Pretty easily. Um, I want to point out this is being recorded very late. On Wednesday. So it probably will not be up. Until... I'm going to say probably one tomorrow when i get off work that way i could render it out tonight and then post it even though it doesn't take that long to render but i still need sleep but it won't be so you're basically getting this recorded on wednesday and it'll be posted on thursday because i don't have enough time So, anyways, uh, World Islands is the last other place besides Mount Silver that we got. We have to do anyway. Uh, but this is kind of the end of the playthrough, so to say. There's not much we can do after this. Uh, there's a couple things I might do. Uh, I might put them or put all my Pokemon at 55 I'll go through the Elite Four I anything that might be like done like that will be done off screen and I'll usually state what I did I always state to make sure everyone knows what I've been doing so we have some items an Ultra Ball not very useful as we've caught in everything but this is kind of where uh well not really in red blue I uh, kind of stated why I thought of each team member, why I picked them, and so on. Which I've already stated before why I picked these team members, and I did the same in Red Blue. But this is kind of where I go back and I react. Not react, um. I put some analysis to how they did. Like, overall. So. We're going to start with the one that's about to pop up on screen, Meltink. Meltink did incredibly well. I've used it before, but with the current team, how it's laid out, it became the go-to Pokemon if I needed to tank a hit. It really was that good. Um, overall, I didn't really have, like, this is not the right way. Uh, great. But... Overall, like, Meltank did incredibly well for what I expected. Uh, Body Slam came a little late. Uh, it still did well. It took everything. Earthquake hasn't been used that much. Fire Punch is merely a gimmick for if I come across a Fortress or a Skarmory. That's literally the two Pokemon. Uh, but overall, great normal type. If you have an in-game team and you want a normal type, Meltank is 
Meltank or Tauros, those are the two I always stand by in uh, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. They do incredibly well with what they're given. Uh, and Meltank, I probably should have started like in order, but eh, who cares. Uh, Meltank overall just did a lot when, uh, like, it's always nice to know in a, in an RPG that you can switch out a party member or something along those lines to have someone come in and you know for a fact it's going to tank whatever comes through. It's a great feeling. The only thing that Melton couldn't tank was probably Bruno's Machamp. But there's that. And then I'm going to go on the flip side of most useful Pokemon to probably the most useless in my opinion. And that was probably Kingdra. Kingdra did a lot less than I expected. I expected to use it a lot more in big battles it didn't really hold its own in power department it was pretty tanky just because of its typing everything was pretty much neutral um but i expect a lot more from its surf overall i think it's probably the worst pokemon i picked up uh jinx is pretty m close to that though though jinx has a lot more like favorable battles I don't know. When it comes to a water type, I felt like I could have picked something else and probably done the same amount of damage, but maybe a little better in certain areas. I I don't think Kingdra was that great. Water Dragon sure is a useful type, though. I will say that. Um, too bad Fairy exists now, but I don't know. I, I think uh, Gen 2 Kingdra doesn't have the necessary tools. Uh, even in game to really stack up to other possible water types like Starmie, Tentacruel. Uh, Gyarados is bad in this generation, don't ever use it. Even like Fear Alligator would have probably done better. Uh, Quagsire would have been interesting. I don't know, there's just some other choices I should have gone with or I could have gone with and I just didn't. Uh, and since I mentioned it in the. Uh, previous conversation uh jinx jinx is a psychic ice which is a very nice typing actually uh it proved to be pretty useful throughout the it's kind of funny because i complained the most about it when it was a, a smoochum but it was actually when it was a smoochum that was most useful because of where it was at a psychic type was very useful to have at that point uh i don't know its defense is just don't stack up for me I for an in-game team member my my mantra is it always has to be able to tank a move and then spit one out and knock it out that's basically what it was it could do the second part incredibly well but it couldn't tank anything and especially as a smoochum and even now it's pretty hard pressed to send it into any type of physical or special attack though special it's a little better and it'll actually tank whatever it is. I think I got most of the items that I missed. I think there's one that I'm missing. But overall, like, for... I've never used a, a Pokemon. That's not true. I've never used a Smoochum from the Odd Egg before. So it was a learning experience on that. I've also never really used a Kingdra. I have used it, but it, it was later. Uh... It was actually like a, li a lot later because I ended up using the dragon scale found in Mount Mortar. That's why I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something differently. And the early evolution didn't really help Kanger's case. But Jinx overall, it, it wasn't a terrible team member. It's just it wasn't really worth the trouble of going through as a smoochum to get this reward. An Alakazam would have done just as good. Uh, I probably would have maybe chosen Espeon over it just because Mud Slap could have come in handy against some Pokemon. Something along those lines. Overall, Jinx did alright. Not not the best, not the worst. Uh I definitely will 
probably never use it again in a second generation uh, game. So there's that. Uh, what's the art? Skarmory actually, um, it did what I expected. It came in really late in the game, so it didn't really get a lot of showtime. Is the proper term, I guess. But it overall, it it was useful. Its steel wing came late. Its defenses were great. Uh, it didn't knock out anything. That and porn, of course. I think we are pretty much done here. But overall, Skarmory really just it it was that that's basically what it does. I. I've used it before, I knew exactly what I was getting into, and it did exactly what I expected. It took any physical attack it wanted, and didn't care. There was not a physical attack that it would be like, oh, that hurt. I, I think we're done here, by the way. So I'm going to head back to uh, Mount Silver. And we'll, we'll be on our way through that and overall Skarmory did incredibly well though uh I didn't expect too much maybe because I've used it before but overall it was a great team member great flyer I always love using Skarmory uh I'm gonna leave Typhlosion for last because it's starter I might start talking about it next time but when it comes to uh, Gengar, which is, uh, as a lot of people should know, is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. But here, I I think in Red and Blue it did better. It's here, I like the ice coverage it gained, but overall, it I don't know, it just. There's not as many normal types as there were in, uh, in game anyway for uh, gold, silver, crystal as there were in red and blue. So maybe it missed out on a lot of immunities from that. Um, it also appeared way earlier, so I couldn't just straight up evolve it. So I had to go through a terrible process of actually training it uh, to become a Gengar. Uh, it put everything to sleep how I wanted. It it was my plan sleeper. Um, it was my plan electric user, which is weird because it's ghost poison, but whatever. Overall, it's uh, it did well. It was the one Pokemon I knew would do something, guaranteed. Uh, there was no surprises there. I just feel now that I've played Red and Blue and Gold, Silver, and Crystal pretty much back to back. Not back to back, but pretty close together. I can say without a doubt, Gengar is better in red and blue for in-game purposes. Expesh. Though, now that I think of it, in red and blue, it's harder to choose which TM to give to Gengar. So... I don't know about that. Now that I think of it... If I didn't plan on giving Gengar the uh, Thunderbolt TM, would I have given it in Red and Blue? Like if I actually had sat hadn't sat down before and went, I should give Thunderbolt to this, this, this. Would I have been willing to? It that's a difficult question because I didn't even think of it until right now. I guess now that I think of it, Gold Silver Crystal probably is better just because of the TM availability. Ouch, Earthquake, jeez. Yeah, because he can get Ice Punch and Thunder Punch pretty easily. I'm I'm gonna say that Gengar has better matchups while um or Gengar has better matchups in red blue while in gold silver crystal he has just a general better TM like usable because Ice Punch, Fire Punch Thunder Punch are all reusable. Well, not reusable, but uh, reviable would be the word. By the way, Miltank just took that Earthquake like a champ. Just want to point that out. And yeah, it's guaranteed, huh? Harden. Well, I'm just going to Earthquake you, so you're dead anyway. 
uh, with that, I think that's going to be the end. I'm probably going to finish my little Pokemon spiel of how well they did with Typhlosion in the next part while we're exploring Mount Silver. Uh, if I've missed anything in Johto Kanto, I'm not going back. Just saying. There's not much I've missed. There's not any like important stuff. So this is kind of the wrap up. Uh, I think I missed one item in World Islands. Oh well. It's not going to be a big deal. So next time, Mount Silver. And maybe if we're fast enough, maybe Red. So till then.